Oh, hey, did you know there is something called Bitterness Database? It's essentially a website that contains hundreds of different compounds reported to be basically bitter. And the only purpose for this website and this database is to literally identify everything that can taste bitter or essentially can activate bitterness taste receptors. And though this might sound a little bit unusual and potentially kind of bizarre, there is a really important reason for this website. And in this video, we're going to discuss some of the recent research on bitterness receptors with some of the new discoveries potentially being somewhat unexpected as well. And well, how wonderful person, this is Anton. Today, we're going to discuss some of the recent and somewhat unexpected discoveries coming from this study you can find in the description by Suzanami Mori and the team from Japan. The study that confirms and explains why a lot of bitterness receptors don't actually only exist inside our mouths, but are also present in a lot of other cells, including on our skin. And so, technically, our skin could potentially taste bitterness as well, with some animals potentially being able to do so, but turns out there's a really important reason for this, and it's a reason nobody expected. In other words, we're going to be discussing the idea behind technically your skin can also taste. Although right now we only know that it can taste bitterness. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's first start with these taste receptors and what we know about them so far. First of all, I remember when I was back in school, like super, super young, this is when science officially accepted that we actually have five different tastes in our mouths, or basically our tongues can technically perceive five different things. We have sourness, sweetness, saltiness, bitterness, with the fifth taste being umame. Named after a Japanese word and the Japanese concept for this taste, that's actually been known in Japan since 1908. But in essence, all of these five tastes are perceived by various cellular receptors that, depending on the taste, work in slightly different ways. Some of them work through the interaction with the ion channels inside the taste receptor cells, while some of them work by binding to certain proteins. The actual mechanism is actually quite different, but for bitterness, it relies on the idea of molecules binding to what's known as G-protein receptors, which then begins a kind of a molecular cascade of various molecular messengers that end up in activation of certain nerve cells, which then tell our brains that, yeah, this is something that's bitter. In this particular picture, you can see that there is a neuron attached to the cell on the bottom. And intriguingly, in a lot of different animals, the number of receptors, or essentially the number of ways of perceiving bitterness, can vary quite a lot. For example, in chickens, there are only three. Cats seem to have at least 12, and humans have 25. And what's even stranger is that mice seem to have 35. Which, though unusual, was eventually explained as the main reason for even having these taste receptors and why animals perceive bitterness to begin with. And so today researchers believe that one of the main reasons why there is such a big difference in the number of receptors is really because of what these receptors were initially for and how they evolved in various species. It's quite likely that bitter receptors actually evolved in order to prevent us from ingesting something that's extremely toxic or potentially harmful would be the ability to detect toxic compounds or potentially poisonous compounds, as essentially most of the poisonous plants, for example, are also usually bitter. And for pretty much all animals, the main protein and essentially the main gene responsible for this taste is the gene you see right here, TAS2R, a bitter taste receptor that, as I mentioned, comes in at least 35 different varieties, probably a lot more. And pretty much most vertebrates, most complex animals, seem to have them. It was even discovered in sharks and a lot of fish, which of course suggests that this gene evolved very early. But what's somewhat intriguing is that it looks like in humans this protein is slowly losing its purpose, or at least is becoming just a little bit less useful. Because compared to other apes, such as for example chimps and gorillas, since our diet has shifted in the last million years or so, and we now consume way more meat compared to before, and have actually learned to cook our food by using fire, this basically resulted in humans consuming detoxified food and thus very likely losing some of these bitterness taste receptors over time. Which is of course why some other animals, such as mice, seem to have way more. Or at least this was the main hypothesis. Bitterness equals toxins and the reason we can taste bitterness is to basically prevent us from eating something toxic. But obviously not everybody agreed with this hypothesis, with a lot of biologists proposing a lot of counter-arguments. And actually the biggest counter-argument here made quite a lot of sense. Not all bitter things turn out to be toxins or dangerous. For example, things like coffee or even quinine, 
which has been used as medicine for thousands of years, also taste bitter to us, yet don't produce any toxic effects. Likewise, some toxins do not taste bitter and can still be dangerous if consumed. And so here, for many, many years, there was just not enough evidence to explain exactly what bitter receptors are for and why so many animals seem to have such a different number. Because over the years, scientists also discovered that this receptor can also help us maintain nutrition, can also regulate our appetite, it also surprisingly produces immune response, especially in our mouth and inside the nasal passage, and can also encourage digestion. So these receptors do seem to have different functions, and so maybe they didn't actually evolve to be protection from toxins and just became that by accident over time. But some of the recent research in the last decade or so discovered something else that was a little bit unexpected. Turns out these receptors don't just exist in our mouths, they seem to exist in a lot of other body parts. For example, that immune response I previously mentioned actually starts inside our noses, inside our sinuses, and even inside our throat, because it's basically initiated by these receptors if they detect any bitterness in our nose or in our throat. But, strangely enough, they also exist in our guts and on our skin. Which is why things here get a little bit more unusual and a little bit more bizarre. And the main difference between the ones inside our tongue and inside our guts or on our skin is really just in regards to that last part involving neurotransmission. The ones in our tongues directly relay messages to our brain telling us what we're tasting. But the same bitterness receptors discovered elsewhere don't seem to send any signals to the brain, but do seem to send signals to some of the nearby cells. Which turned out to be kind of mysterious, but was officially finally explained in this recent study. And so here the Japanese researchers essentially focused on these skin cells, these so-called keratinocytes, trying to figure out what tissue-specific functions they seem to serve. And their overall conclusion is that it does indeed seem to be related to toxins. It seems to be some kind of a defense mechanism, mostly against toxic substances that seem to touch our skin. With all of this demonstrated in this recent study, by using a variety of skin cells that were then mixed with a lot of different substances, including substances that would actually deactivate bitterness receptors. And so here for this experiment, they used human stem cells to grow human keratinocytes that were then mixed with a compound usually used in the lab because it's extremely bitter. Although it seems to only taste bitter for some people. Because this is actually entirely genetic. It's known as phenotheocarbamide, and it's basically a compound that approximately 70% of people taste as extremely bitter. But people that don't contain this gene don't taste anything. And so once the cells detected this bitter compound, they almost right away started producing what's known as ABC transporters, which is essentially a cell's defense mechanism that dramatically increases excretion of harmful substances, expelling them out of the cell. And so in this study, in order to trace all of this, researchers tagged some of these compounds with a visible tracer, which allowed them to physically see how all of these cells were responding. But in order to then prove the point, they also used another compound, something known as Verapmil, which is known to inhibit various transporters, and which then causes these toxins to accumulate inside. With this experiment definitively showing us that these bitterness receptors in our skin cells seem to specifically react to potentially toxic compounds. And so their main role is protecting the cell from being damaged from anything that tastes bitter. And since it's correlated with being toxic, here it doesn't actually differentiate. For these cells, bitterness means bad and it's going to be expelled from the cell. Which basically supports the idea that bitterness evolved to help us avoid toxic compounds. But this discovery also suggests that, technically, it might be possible to basically cleanse various skin cells by applying something that's not toxic and bitter to them. In other words, by activating these receptors that then causes cells to remove anything toxic from within might actually present us with an opportunity to create a drug that can clean our skin cells by using internal mechanisms. In other words, this confirmation that bitterness seems to protect us from toxicity also suggests that bitter compounds can actually be used for healing as well. Or at least that's one of the main conclusions from the study. But at least for now that's basically all we know about this, mostly because this is a completely new discovery and there's just no additional details yet. Nevertheless, it was kind of unusual to find out that a lot of our body parts seem to actually taste bitterness without telling our brains, and in many cases, it just seems to protect our bodies from various toxic things we might touch without realizing. But once we find out something else about this topic, or once there's some other cool research about something unusual discovered about the human body, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. 
Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support us on Patreon by joining each channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.